So we have this 2007 air conditioning complaint and I'm just starting to look at it. I have not gauged up yet. What do I notice? You notice the missing cap. Has somebody tampered with it? Probably not in a long time because when looking at it really closely, there is no oil or dust buildup around here. Inside, looking deep inside the threads, there's no dye, there's no oil, there's no dust. This thing is bone dry. So that tells me at least it wasn't touched just prior to me getting it. Customer complaint doesn't work. Follow all your lines, look for leaks. You do your visual first. You confirm what the customer says, but doing a quick visual, coming down here, and if you look, you see the oil spot there in the corner, right there. So we probably have some condenser tubes, unless it's that receiver dryer on top, right where it connects, it has an O-ring. This has a few years on it, so let's see what our gauge pressures are right now. Like I do most every time, I always vacuum out my gauges all the time, fill them up with nitrogen between runs. So let's shut off my gauges and let's plug up, hook up, and see what we have. First of all, you don't want debris, dust, Blow out really good, use your air nozzle. This is actually pretty good. You blow it out. You don't want debris down inside if somebody left these off before. This is your sealing surface where your O-ring inside here seals right on this flat surface. You want to make sure that is clean. Uh, sometimes you see me put my nylog and I'll put some nylog or dielectric grease right around here to help lubricate my O-ring only do that every so often because the o-rings stay pretty well lubricated what's it look like in there no dye no oil completely dry and this is not friendly come on there we go Let's see what we have. We have enough pressure to at least engage the clutch. If all the pressure switching switches are okay, usually somewhere over 42, 44 PSI is enough to engage safety switches. Let's kick the vehicle on and see what it does. Give her a little crank start here. And we're on AC passenger cold on 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 says AC on we should be operating it's a mild day it's only about 65 degrees we have nothing so it's a Honda an Acra still have nothing oh wait a minute did we have something no still have nothing <laughs> So, who's my culprit? Since it's a Honda and an Acura, we jump to our tried and true eight out of 10 times. Right there, you see that snowflake? So you got a snow, you got a fan there. That one's for fan. You have a fan here, plus the little snowflake label. You have for fuses, MG clutch. And so that'll be your clutch right there. And then you have just the snowflake by itself between these other two right there. That's our culprit. And it would have been really nice if I would have brought my pliers over with me. I said I was just going to throw this on up. Let's waste some time and get unprepared. Okay, where's my, ah, there we go. Not the ones I wanted to grab, but something's better than nothing. Can't find my needle nose. Okay, 
Who will I disconnect? Okay, so this one is not important. It's just a heater, defrost heater. Now it gave me some clearance. Get that puppy out of there. We have this fan is running, this fan is running. That's telling me both these relays are good. Let's kill a fan. What do we hear? Hey, did you need a fancy scanner tool? See, yeah, sometimes you will need other stuff, but let's watch. Listen. Bingo. Done. Okay. Now, by the appearance of that leak down there, I'm going to, let's say, assume. Ooh, look at these pressures. I could tell if I'm full or low. Yeah, right. Um, so let's gauge up. Well, actually, you have hands and you have a brain. Yep, I'm low. Okay. <laughs> How the hell? Explain it to me. Um, this gets into superheat, and I really have to do a more detailed... I'll try to exclude the math and make it really easy about exactly what the refrigerant charge and superheat and temperatures of lines going in and out like here is your line coming out of your compressor the bigger one the smaller one is the one coming out so the bigger one comes from the compressor that's the discharge that's the high pressure gas that's supposedly the liquid discharge from the condenser and you hear I use the word supposedly because in an ideal world it's supposed to be completely 100% liquid but that's not always true and so there is a little thing you do about temperature and the inlet and outlet and there are some average numbers but that has been changing over the years with these high efficiency compressors and variable displacement high efficiency variable displacement compressors and high efficiency condensers temperatures and pressures of inlet and outlet of condensers have been changing and uh, so some numbers that we we're used to seeing no longer correlate anymore and I tried to do one of these videos where I show you in real time, real life, when I haven't even looked at a vehicle. And here I am, I'm not prepared. I didn't have a set of needle nose to pull a uh, relay. I didn't have my test probes hooked up to show you some temperatures. Not very friendly to get down there with these, but it's better than most. SLT, section line temperature. Not the most ideal location, but it's better than none. Ideal location would be right up there out of the evaporator. But on a lot of cars, especially if it's a hot engine, you have a hot exhaust manifold located, this is a V6. You have a hot exhaust manifold down here, a couple hundred degrees, radiating heat that will strike your sensor and heat up the plastic and will change your reading so you got to remember that you got to stop putting these in line with radiant heat uh, if you do wrap them up at really good in ra rags keep a piece of crinkle up the aluminum and Reynolds wrap foil with you and put the reflective side out and that will stop all radiant heat from getting to your sensor that's uh, for another video at another time so let's do uh, I'll try to do a two-part video uh, I'll only have time for one video today, so this will be it. This is video number one. Now pay very close attention. Suction line temperature. This is the temperature coming out of the evaporator. This is the one where guys say if it's coming out cool out of your dash, that's good enough. Don't change it. You don't have to change. For, um, let's see. I had a YouTuber. No, it's a form guy. Somebody said... You never have to change AC, only if it's not working, then you do something. Uh, he really wanted to argue this fact. Said, he goes, that's stupid. Uh, sucking out all the gas out of the air conditioning and putting the gas back in is like changing air in a tire. You mean you have to tell us we have to drain the air out of a tire and, and fill it back up every now and then. You could tell how simple and how ununderstanding this person is. 
and he really wanted to push that back home that it's unnecessary to service your AC and drain it and refill it. Um, so there are, there's a circumstance with your superheat where you could get ample cooling out of the dash but have no cooling to your compressor and your compressor starts overheating, breaking down to oil. And we're nice and cold. This is beautiful. But I know it's low because the superheat is way to hell off. And uh, it's not coming back cold, delivering cold. You, were, you need a cold gas delivered back to the compressor. The manufacturers of the AC systems, the manufacturers of the AC system is not Honda, Toyota, Ford, Chrysler. They do not manufacture air conditioning systems. It's a third entity that they buy it from and put it in your vehicle. So the superheat is not just for cooling the passenger, but it's also to deliver an extra amount of refrigerant, enough left in the suction line for return to keep suspended in an aerosol the refrigerant oil and it's cold and a compressor has the heat of compression a heat of friction and if it's an electric compressor you add on the heat of that inductive motor in there that's like a big radiant electric heater for your house the motor windings of an electric motor are like that so it needs a spray of cold refrigerant and if you don't have enough refrigerant left over it will not spray that nice cold refrigerant just like a can of aerosol can of oil like wd-40 you see that mist you see that spray and it has oil droplets in it and they actually use refrigerant as propellant to carry as a carrier to carry that oil well that's what it looks like inside the section line if you could imagine somebody spraying wd-40 and it's coming back to your compressor and as you know you spray that can the can gets colder as you keep spraying aerosol cans and if you put your finger in the spray of a hair spray or an oil spray it's cold to your finger so that's what you're doing you're constantly spraying wd-40 back down the line i'm using a layman's term very simple into your compressor when you allow your refrigerant level to draw as this suction line temperature goes up you get to a point where you no longer have enough refrigerant to cool off the compressor and the compressor starts superheating. Then, because it's lack of oil and you're changing its compression ratio, on top of that, when the mass of the refrigerant gets so low, it no longer can keep the aerosol suspension of oil anymore and the oil actually starts puddling back in the evaporator and the oil starts retaining and staying in the evaporator if you have a large truck with a rear air conditioning evaporator it'll stay back there and on trucks the line will come down low and it's usually a larger number 10 or number 12 on the older ones it was number 12 and some manufacturers made this mistake uh, their line was a number 12 was too big and they couldn't keep the velocity of oil up and so it would uh, get logged and stay inside the line low under the frame of the truck and it could not make its way back up and over to the compressor and they would lose all the oil in the back, burn up compressors. Chevy learned this hard fact for a few years in some of their SUVs with dual air conditioning. So without the proper superheat and quantity of refrigerant, you're overheating the compressor and you start losing oil retention to come back to the compressor itself but you will still have cooling enough refrigerant to make the evaporator cold cooling for the passenger and they go oh i'm fine yeah you're fine but your compressor is hurting and so we got 143 because we only have one fan moving because i took i sacrificed the fan uh relay for the ac and I didn't jump right to a scanner like the famous scanner person who likes to bring out a scanner for everything and waste your time and then tell you to buy expensive uh, relay checking kits and tools and uh, circuit breaker test stuff with his link down below. I don't do that. I give it to you fast, free, simple, easy. Um, that's it on this one. There will be a number two because what I'll show you is I'll show you the difference of the superheat 
and I'll show you the difference of the temperature of the suction line after I do a recharge. So I'm about to throw this on the recovery unit and show you the after effects. So right now we're nice and cool out the dash. There's nothing wrong. I need to get my thermometers to show you. We're perfect out the dash. There is absolutely nothing wrong to anybody who would feel that say, hey, the AC works great, but I'll show you the difference. The compressor is hurting right now. Uh, we have 107 degrees liquid line temperature coming out of the liquid line. Let's see what's coming out of the compressor. Okay, let's see. Can I get a hold of it? Barely, but might be able to. It's not the best contact. I'm being pushed over, so that means I don't have a straight and level contact with my sensor. So it won't pick up all the heat it should. But you could see somewhat of a, a jump there. It went to 156 degrees. That's the temperature of the refrigerant coming out of the compressor. And that's after it left the compressor through a line. It goes about seven, eight inches of line. Then it goes through a rubber hose, about 18, 19 inches of rubber hose. And then now it's back here. So the temperature at the compressor will even be higher than the temperature way out here. So let's go to video number two and see what the difference between suction line our liquid line temperature and our superheat. 